Welcome to the official podcast of the National Pickleball League, where we go inside the NPL. Welcome to Everything in the Kitchen Dink. My name is Michael Hammer Mike Chen, and I'm here with my co-host, David, the Professor George, and Jen Bonecrusher Gawas. And we're going to have a special guest here today as well from our Houston Hammers. But before we introduce her, first of all, I'd like to say thank you for listening to our podcast. Thank you to our sponsors, right? Gamma, the Chuck Ball by Gamma is the official ball of the National Pickleball League. And Gearbox is the official paddle of the National Pickleball League, which I use, by the way, as well. And then we have Incrediware, right? Active Recovery, the official active recovery wear of the National Pickleball League. And the Ernie Ball Machine which can help you become a pro in the National Pickleball League. And as well as we have Julian Coffee, right? We get up in the morning drinking Julian Coffee all day to get us going for the day. And what do we drink at the end of the day as we get tired in a match in the National Pickleball League? Fat tire. You got a fat tire. We drink fat tire. So thanks to all those sponsors. And then we're going to have another new sponsor coming up uh, this weekend in Houston. And then we're going to make, by the way, David and Jen, we're going to make predictions about who's going to win in Houston. So you've got some time to think about it for the rest of the podcast and podcast. We're going to make predictions. Okay. And Jen, make sure you know who's on the injury list before you make a prediction. Okay. Don't pick a team whose top two guys are out for the week. <laughs> All right, I'll try not to. All right. Uh, but uh, so without further ado, uh, let's bring on our uh, special guest. She is actually the number one women's player on the number one team in the National Pickleball League, the Houston Hammers. So without further ado, let's welcome hey. Sherry Corder. Hey, uh, thank you for having me. Sure, Sherry. And we, I was just looking at your stats. We just compiled these stats, and it's unbelievable. Not only the number one player, I think you're the number one when it comes to winning percentage in the National Pickleball League, men or women, 27 and 5, 84%. Unbelievable yeah. record. Most wins, best winning percentage. How does it feel to be playing in the National Pickleball League? Well, first of all, I wish I could really close a match, but um, I guess I can. Um, <laughs> first of all, I have to give kudos to um, Helen, um, my partner in women's. We're 16 and 0, and we, we are 16 and 0 because of her. Because of yeah. her. Because of I, her. It is, she is, it, it, it's, I'm just along for the ride with her. So. I, I got to give a shout out to her too. I think her record's like, like something like 27 and five as well. It is. So you guys it, it are could like, be. Yes. You guys are like the top two players mm -hmm. when it comes to record. And yeah, you, you guys, the Houston Hammers, 14 and two. Yes. yes. Top two. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's been fun. Um, it's like not my team. It's um, the Houston Hammers, not my Houston Hammers. Um, I'm part of a team. We have a great ownership and um, we have great chemistry uh, on the team as well. Uh, couldn't be happier. It, 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 I'm having the time of my life. Um, I, I love team events. So, how, how, Well, as the number one player, don't you have any influence of drafting players on your team? And my nickname is Hammer Mike. I was waiting for you and the ownership to kind of, Say, and we're drafting Michael Hammer Mike Chen. What happened? I what happened is the they wanted to be in first place. So okay. they did not draft Hammer Mike. That's why they are in first place. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Dave. <laughs> well, I have to I pick on you. I'm dreading this interview, right? I've given Houston so much all year. All year. I'm sweating through like this is my second shirt. I'm so scared of uh, Sherry giving me a, like uh, what I deserve. And so I really don't even know what to say. I mean, if you look at the average match time for my mixed matches, they're, what they're like 18, 19, 20 minutes, maybe more. I think ours was 11. You and I. You mean when you <laughs> and, and your partner, Scott, played David and his partner, it was 11 minutes. So it was a, probably a blowout. about 11 minutes. Was it maybe it was 13 if we include the warm up? And, and who won that match, Sherry, by the way? <laughs> who won, David? <laughs> oh. Hey, hey, you guys always ask, like, how do you beat Sherry? <laughs> Why don't you just learn how not to beat Sherry? <laughs> just watch that match. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know. I mean, that was just a good old fashioned take me behind the woodshed, you know, like just an overall butt whooping. I was, I was lucky not to get hurt. I mean, <laughs> she was hitting the ball so cleanly. I wasn't even trying to win the points at a certain point. I was just trying not to get hurt because like. <laughs> The two people on our podcast are probably the two most body bagged 
or the body baggers in the whole <laughs> league. And so I would, she came at me so hard and so fast. I mean, I, I'm happy it would took 11 minutes or else I would have <laughs> like, you know, it would have been even worse if it took longer. So it was a good old fashioned butt whooping. Wasn't it right good after job, that week? That's what he gets. You know? <laughs> Wasn't that the week right after you said the Houston hammers are overrated? Well, the problem is I've said they're overrated like four times. Um, if you don't know, every time I go by Houston, Mary Beth or Amy or Sherry will just boo me. Right. <laughs> and she was so hyped for that match. She'd hit a point, hit a clean winner. I'd like just barely uh, get the ball back in self-defense and then get smashed in my face again. And then she would just give me the stare down overrated now. And then so <laughs> I, I think I did at one point, like wink at you, I will say. Right. No, <laughs> you hit an overhead and I got it back. And then I hit a winner and I just winked at you. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She, she loved right, it. And I, I deserve back. it. We're working I deserve on it. Put the ball away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We, we girls got to teach The question him. is professor, you know, are smart. Do you continue yeah. after that match to call them overrated after that? No, no, I, I took it. Like there's Good. pictures. So I apologize to the team. And everything. I mean, it's just objectively not true. And I don't, I actually don't think so anymore. In fact, I don't even know. We can argue about second place, but there's really not an argument about first place anymore. Wow. Um, wow. So, yeah. how, what will you do differently? So it's not 11 minutes next time when you play Sherry. Like, what is For nine your minutes. strategy? <laughs> I'll, I'll take my full allotment of timeouts. Yeah. I will uh, maybe make it take a medical timeout. Um, I I have no idea. We are lucky to score a point or two. Yeah, I don't hit to have, me. I have no answers. It was well. well let's talk about her game a little bit because I played against her for fun. I've never. I'm not in the pod one, but she not only has a hammer for drive. Like her name should be Sherry Hammer Quarter, right? But she freaking lobs like crazy. Like just when you think she's gonna hammer you, and you get in a low position, you're squatting ready. Then she loops this lob over your head. Like, you don't know what she's doing is the problem, right? And then she does it with a smile, like, like, <laughs> oh, like, I just got you again. So, like, how do you beat someone that will hammer at one point, think it cross court for a win at another point, and then lob over your head at another point? Like, how do you beat that? Maybe Sh Sherry, Sherry you can, yeah. I'm not sure if I tell you I have to kill yeah, you. I'm not telling you how to beat me. Beat her. <laughs> I will say my lobs are not as good as Michael Chen, the hammer, the original hammer. I mean, NASA picks up those lobs on their radar. I mean, at Kansas City, he was going high. He was going high. I was very impressed. Are you his serve wrong? was even higher. I was like, are you afraid of his lobs or his serve? <laughs> I mean, they're, they're kind of both. Yeah. That's my lob serve. <laughs> NASA, NASA's like, uh, we have a problem here. <laughs> I, I love Kansas City. I think the ceiling is 60 foot high. Oh, my and I gosh. I went about 50 so awesome. foot on my lob serve, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the only thing that I have. See, I have that. But even though they call me Hammer Mike, I don't hammer the ball like Bone Crusher does or you, Sherry, does. I actually actually have more of a, of a soft game. But I get everyone psyched out thinking I'm a hammer, and I throw this, like, two-mile-an-hour lob serve up at them just to say, what, what is this, you know? But uh, tell, tell us, Sherry, compare National Pickleball League and, and getting up for that and the excitement of playing for, like, a whole team versus when you go into these tournaments. Right. And you play in these tournaments with a partner. Compare and contrast your feelings, your emotions, your excitement about playing in a tournament versus an NPL weekend. So when I play in the NPL, you know, you have your team dinners, you have your team lunches, you get together, you have your teammates watching you play. Um, and that's cool. And then I also have to worry about my teammates. I, I want to be there for them. Right. So you're not alone. Um, I felt like when I was um, last weekend at APP, I'm just hanging with my partner and just kind of moving around, maneuvering the day. But I really didn't see many people. Uh, I mean, I'd see them occasionally. I'd see Jen or David, but it, it, at MPL, it's much more of a family and um, team environment, not alone, uh, which I love. And I, 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 it's 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 great. You know? So you like hanging out with a lot of people. You don't like just you and your partner hanging out the whole day. I'm not, I'm Is fine. I'm, I'm you know yeah. I mean it's it's just it's a different vibe. It's not about so much about me. It's about right. the team. So you kind of get out of your head. You can't get in your head too much because you have to stay there for your team. It's about your team. Does that make you a better player when yes. you play? Or does that? Oh yes, does. better. Oh yeah. Because some people say they get so focused on helping their teammates that then when they get on the court, they're a little bit distracted and haven't focused on their game as much. 
and they and they got to really understand like okay if I'm going to be a coach player I want to coach my team but I also can't lose focus that I've got a big match coming up as well and I got to play well with our team I don't think I'm the coach player I think that I go out and lead by example and um watch and if you need me I'm there uh, cheering you on. But I think most of mine is lead by example and go out there and just be a beast and just tell all the other women on my team to go out there and just be, be outright mean and be a beast and just go for it. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Jen, awesome. Jen's a beast. I mean, I can, I, I know one when I see what. <laughs> you both smile. There. You both act so nice off the court. And then I'm afraid <laughs> to play against you guys because you're like ham. You're like looking for my my chest to hit that ball right in the middle of it and nail me. That's why she's I'm going lower. Pressure. I'm not going. I'm not going <laughs> lower. <laughs> uh -oh. Uh -oh. No, just David. I'm sorry. Uh -oh. That's for David only. <laughs> okay, good. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Let the record show though. I called Houston as a team overrated multiple times. I've said Sherry is the best female player in the whole league, if not the whole world. So just know that next time you're hunting for me, I said the team not anymore. Boys overrated. Never you. Just let the record show. Yeah. So next time wow. I pop one up to you, just keep that in mind when you come after me. In fact, okay, to David's defense, I remember every match I ever played. My very first pro tournament was in Cincinnati a year mm -hmm. ago. Mm -hmm. I was nervous. I came off the court after get, losing to you and Adam. Mm -hmm. I, I know I know the score. I remember. And I was so new to this sport. And I was like, oh, I felt like I played so bad. I felt, I'm like, our dinks were just so, he's like, Jen, it was, it, she's really good. Because I didn't know who you were. I didn't know who Adam, I, you know, but it, later I felt better about that loss, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, I was like, they were just, you were just so, so steady. But yeah, so I think that was, that was my very first. I remember that. I remember. So, but yeah. I remember the court we were on. <laughs> yeah, right there. I just, so it's yeah. a good match. I was like, I was sad, you know, but yeah. You're, so. That was my was, first APP senior pro tournament. That was mine. My first mm -hmm. one. Mine too. You won, didn't you? Mm -mm. No, we did yeah. not. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 we did no. not. Well, Sorry, you Adam. Beat, you beat David and I in 12 minutes. So, you know. <laughs> no, we so, so, Sherry, a lot of people don't may not know your background. I'd love to hear a little bit about your upbringing, you know, how you got into pickleball. What was your sports background and, and how you became such an incredible player? Because it wasn't like you woke up one day, didn't play any sports, and all of a sudden you became who you are. So love to hear your your story. Uh, you know, my sports background is tennis. I played tennis. Um, my dad was my coach, um, which he's been at the NPL and he's probably coached everyone at this point. <laughs> he thinks he knows pickleball. Um, and so I went to the University of Kentucky after playing junior tennis. And then when I was done with Kentucky, I was pretty burned out and I didn't want to continue my tennis career. Uh, so I thought I wouldn't play tennis again, but then I really liked coaching. So I started coaching at Ohio Wesleyan University, uh, which is a D3 women's tennis team and uh, coached there for eight years and um, started a family and just kind of backed off of everything. And then did you play I any sports when you had a fan? When you had a family, you, you didn't, you stopped playing all sports. Like I didn't know? play. No, I didn't. Wow. I was burned out. Like pickleball, like tennis to me was, I was burned out. I, I even work. when I was coaching, I didn't play for fun. I was wow. done. So I would coach and I would play with the girls, but I would not play for fun. I mean, I didn't play. So right. it was hard to find people that I wanted to play with. Um, but I just didn't like it anymore. I, did, I really didn't like tennis. I liked coaching tennis, but I didn't like playing tennis. I know it's weird to hear, but so 2020 comes around, COVID hits, and um, I'd played pickleball a couple times before, the summer before, and I absolutely hated it. I didn't understand because <laughs> I just hit the crap out of the ball, and I thought, this is dumb. <laughs> I, I was My husband and I thought, we are so good. We've played pickleball twice. Let's go enter a four or five tournament. <laughs> We lost every match. Um, I didn't even go to the kitchen. I, I, I literally, I think I hit and stayed back the whole time. I didn't know what to do. Um, never played again for probably 10 months. COVID hits. I have nothing to do. I'm walking the dog and I see friends playing pickleball. And I'm like, I guess I'll try that again. And, <laughs> and you know, this time it was more the social side of it that I appreciated. Yeah. And from there, I was lucky enough to meet my benefactor in town, Dave Ganim. He owns the Pickle Shack. He he would have a league at his house with the best players in town. That included CJ Klinger. Um, you know, tell us what, what town are you in? What town are I'm you in? I'm in Dublin, Ohio, which is in central Ohio near Columbus. 
And um, he was kind enough to see something and he brought me in. And from there, I just started playing with the best players in town and um, we're a family. And it was, wow. it's, it's just, it's really fun um, to, to bring up. You have a 13 year old coming up, Cam Chafin. I mean, we play with him. It's our job to, you know, curate this kid. You know, it's awesome watching him grow. He, he teaches me. I mean, I'm so is lucky. He the new, is he the future yes. Ben Johns? <laughs> he's oh he's the future let me tell you Thir- he just turned 13 he's won um main draw matches in app wow heard of him yeah what's he, his name he, again so everyone knows cam chafin and he's the most humble young man you will ever meet and wow. he is he, he's at all the tournaments and he's just he's lovely and everyone thinks he's my son because he's always with me <laughs> he's my pickleball son <laughs> Wow. Gladly, <laughs> you know we hear pickleball wife, pickleball husband, now pickleball son. Wow. I have a pickleball son. <laughs> yeah, the thing about that, me. <laughs> you know, wow. Sherry, like I'm tired of tennis as well, and I'm yeah. like I'm getting, you know, and, and again, tennis. And when we play like even USTA or whatever, five, it's just a bunch. It's all of us. You have to drive to find good good players. It does get ruined if somebody is not the same level. But you weren't playing with your husband. You weren't playing with thirteen year old. You weren't playing with a seven year old. Really, pickle is so unique that I play with my son. I play with my. We can play, and it's still fun. Tennis isn't fun if one if you've got three five zeros and one four zero. It just doesn't work, and it's just you like you said, it's harder to find matches. And so, yeah. What sport do you show up and you bring a lawn chair? Because you you (laughs) I'm like. And we're like, what is this sport? And then we go, oh, yeah, because you stay for like six hours and you mix in and you have fun. And I mean, that's how we started. And we, I mean, we literally would play all day. It's and every day. Yeah. We hurt so 20, bad. 2021 is when you got addicted. 2020. 2020. Like, this right when, when COVID addicted. hit, wow. I started. Yeah. 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 And, you played and, tennis at Kentucky. Were you with Chris mm-hmm. Arges? She was out, I think, the year before I came in, but okay. we had the same coach. We had the same okay. coach. Okay. Wow. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. But we didn't know each other. My daughter's wow. at Kentucky right now. Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. Awesome. She wow. Loves it. Yeah. So you've been playing for four years and you're hooked and you're not bored of pickleball yet. No, no, I love it. <laughs> there are days that there, there are really days Michael. that I hate it. There are days I hate it, but I love it. There, there have been days that I go home crying. So I'm just like, I hate this game. It's so frustrating. <laughs> or, but you... You get to play with Cam and CJ Klinger. Are you serious? That I don't know. Cool. Let me tell you, I drill. Sometimes I get to be on the court with CJ if I'm lucky, but um, I get to, but I, I'm with Cam. Yeah, I get, I, I have, I'm a lucky girl. I have the best players to play with. So how come you didn't play for Columbus since Columbus is right next door? Good point. I thought I was. When you said, did you have a say in your draft? Well, yeah, I did for Columbus. We talked about who I like on that team. <laughs> oh, so you Sarah, thought you were going to get drafted. Team get you. <laughs> so you helped out Columbus. You thought you could get drafted by Columbus and boom, Houston sweeps you up. I know Jeff. I've played with Jeff. He plays at the same club. Yeah. It was, um, yeah. Jeff, we, we, Jeff McKnight, who's the yes, owner of yes, the Columbus yes, team. Yes, and, yes, yes. I, I got to tell you one story. I was on their draft night, right? And and Houston went before uh, Columbus. And when Houston drafted you over Columbus, all I hear is from uh, Paul McKnight, oh, and I can't say the word, but <laughs> I kind of cursed. Oh. And it was, it was like yeah. <laughs> shocked. And then but, I get a phone call from Houston, Texas. Yeah. Hey, Sherry, you know, Romy's <laughs> calling me and it's, it's like, I knew it, but I will tell you this. I had my, I had my ear to the ground. I could tell you where everyone's going. I knew what was going on, except I didn't know what Houston was doing. Oh, yeah. And, and then Romy slipped a little message into one of my Facebook posts when Jeff McKnight and I posted a picture together yeah. and he goes, what about Houston Hammer, Sherry? And I thought, Hmm, Uh-oh. something's going on. So when they <laughs> called me, I was like, mm, uh, yeah, Paul, I kind of, I knew it. <laughs> Paul, re- Paul and Jeff really wanted, he's, oh shoot, is, is, a, is a nice version, but he was just, yeah. he put it out. We all laugh like, okay, I yeah. guess you guys wanted Sherry. So yes, yes. It made but, sense, but, yeah. but Hey, I'm where I should be. It all ended up great. They have, and, and, and the hot shots are having an amazing team. Yeah. Are they, you worried about them beating you in the playoffs? I'm not worried about anybody, but <laughs> no, they're an amazing team, but let's like, you know, I, I, no. Uh-oh, this is a recording. I'm <laughs> no, not worried no. about anybody. <laughs> yeah. Why? Yeah. I'm worried about us. We're just worried about us. We just go do our thing and whoever's on the other side of the court, you know, we'll establish our fastball and you guys got to adjust to it. That's all it is. Wow. And you know, everyone, everyone can beat everyone. Anyone can beat anyone on a given day. 
you just got to go out and take care of business on on your court with your game. David, remember that when you play Sherry again. Yeah. Anybody can beat anyone David, on any given day. David, just bring me it. chocolate and candy and be really nice to me. And that will mess me up. That will mess me up so bad. Like you will have, that's the way to beat me. Be nice. Done. To me. I don't Done. believe you, Sherry. No take backs. <laughs> Done. Done. Easy for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to ask as a little bit of a transition, but, but one thing that I've noticed, and because I'm not really in that elite group of people, I'm trying to get there. And I think from a little bit of an outsider's perspective, we place a little bit too emphasis on the top male players in general. I'm not calling anyone out in particular. And I think the NPL is actually better than most of promoting the top female players. But I don't know. It's been a couple weeks or something. You had a Facebook post. And it was, I mean, almost a hundred comments, not likes, a few hundred likes. Who is wow. going to turn the light on? So I don't know if people are familiar with this or not, but they can go to your Facebook page. Can you just tell us a little bit about the Facebook post and maybe what the impetus was for you to post about that in the first place? I had had clients um, calling me crying about going to open play and um, just saying that they played with some guys that just thought they had to be Ben Johns and took over the court. Mm. Um, one, one good friend got stepped on and she now mm. is, has been out for a couple weeks. Um, I, I feel like sometimes it, even in MPL, I, I was sent a video of, a, of someone that was, you, it was all in good. No one's a bad person, but I saw I saw someone just not feeling really good on the court because they were being coached like nonstop. And it was again, from a great place. Um, and I just wanted people to know that everything comes from, you're trying to do good. You're out there, you want to win, but we need to be aware of, of, of who we're out there with and just tap paddles. You don't have to tell us what we did wrong. You don't like, I do not play well if my partner tells me to do one thing and one thing only, if you tell me, Sherry, I just want you to dink and make 17 shots. I'm probably going to suck so bad. I'm going to go downhill. And then if you tell me how I'm doing it wrong, um, you might as well just um, pack your bags and leave the court. So if we could all, and this is not just men and women, it's just everyone. If we could all just be aware that we're all out here and we want to win, but we want to have fun and we need to honor each other and um, just tap paddles and smile and figure out the best way to play with that partner. Um, I think MPL is a wonderful environment because we can all support each other. And Michael has, you know, and Beth and Rick, they've all created a great environment where we, we, we're not, it's, it's not like a tournament where you choose your partner and you're there alone. No, this is, this is a team environment and we can all raise each other up and help each other. I certainly am not perfect. Um, I, I've had moments on the court where I've been a really bad partner um, and, and I'm learning and, and I'm always learning, but I've, what I've learned is I'm never going to quote unquote win and have fun unless I bring the best out of my partner. So what can I do for them? You know, what, what can I do to, to bring them up? And I guarantee they'll start playing better and they'll play the best of their life and you'll have the best time. And we'll all be happy. <laughs> Win or yeah. lose, we're going to be happy. We're going to be happy. We always, That's, we yeah. always say, let, like, let's not take the fun out of pickleball. We all started this. We all played competitive tennis or competitive mm -hmm. sports or something. We've mm -hmm. done that. And that was work. And yes. this is fun. And we're in our 50s. And it's such a gift to be alive while pickleballs. It's yes. like perfect timing. Hey, you know, Jen, so Jen, I never played uh, competitive tennis. I almost made the NFL, but I didn't. That's right. He was almost a lineman. Uh, we went over uh, that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I didn't play oh, yes. tennis. I was a. Almost was a professional football player, but you know, Danny. We, and I I mean, Michael and I have talked, that. but Michael and I have talked about, um, you know, MPL is a wonderful environment to to promote such such good um, healthy competition and partnerships, and what a wonderful um, platform that we that you, Michael and and Beth and Rick have created that we can change this environment and hopefully it can overflow into my clinics and my rec play in my neighborhood um, where people can stand up and say, Hey, you know, I just, let's just tap paddles. Let's have fun. Right. If they see us on live stream doing this, then it, it, I think we can really make a difference. And that's, that's, that's what well, NPL is so wonderful. Well, well, thank you, Sherry. I really appreciate the nice words, but this, our goal is to make it a fun place and a safe place for everyone to play pickleball yes. and love it. 
and teach them about like, we're, we're all not good partners. We're not perfect, but teach them. Exactly. You can be a better partner. And you bringing that up about how important it is to be a good partner on the Facebook post is critical. We had Dane Gingrich on and, and with Jill Martin, the book Pickleball Mindset. There's a whole chapter in his book and give a shout out him that talks about you want to be good at pickleball, be a great partner first. Mm -hmm. And this is what it takes to be a, a pickleball, great pickleball partner. So he writes a, a chapter about it. I read about it. I'm like, wow. I don't do all those things sometimes, you know, and, and I got to be a better partner so we can all learn and improve even at our age of oh, yeah. 50 plus and super senior me over the age of 60 plus. So we can all learn like it's never too late, right? Like this is, we're not doing this for a living. Like nobody's getting rich playing in the national pickleball league. We're doing this to have fun. We're doing this to meet people for mental health, for physical health, for a community. Right. So let's lift each other up. Like you said, Sherry. So I really mm -hmm. applaud you for, for focusing on how we can all be better partners. Yeah. And like you mentioned yeah. family, this is very small. Like your partner, like David and I were teammates last year. We're not together this year. Michael's his teammate. You know, so that your person that you're playing against was your, you're playing with her last year, or you're going to play against them in a tournament. So, you know, it is a small little world. And so it's just one match is not worth it. And so ultimately, if you are not that nice, it doesn't work anyway. It's not going to make your partner play better because you're being so hard on them. So you just got to say, you be you, or just have fun. Like I said, we were kind of like starting to lose this weekend. I'm like, I go, let's go have some fun. You know, we switch yes. sides. We switch yeah. side. I go, let's, let's rock it. Let's, let's have fun. I mean, or, you know. Yeah. And I think there's different, I mean, I'm pretty intense on the court. I think that's a given <laughs> um, and, and it's okay. There's different ways to compete, but I can also have fun being intense with my partner. I'm not, I'm not intense on my partner. Um, I feel like Helen and I have a nice mix of she, he's like all puppy dogs and rainbows and I'm firing, you know, darts at you, but, um, <laughs> but, did you, um, did you ever play with Helen before MPL? No, or no, no. See, so here's a chance. You met someone else that you got to know a lot better playing MPL that you may not. Have we to we know knew otherwise. each other before um, we click hit it off off the court. So there's chemistry there. Definitely. Um, I'm one that needs chemistry. I can play with anyone and I can find that chemistry. I feel like no, so chemistry. I, I, I think that you also have to realize that you're not going to have like that amazing chemistry with everyone you play with an MPL, but you can find a middle ground and you can find something that you can hold on to. And that positive, like just, just, you don't have to talk so much. I mean, that's what I'm trying to work on. Just limit yourself talk on the court where you're just, your, your teammate doesn't need to know what to do on that shot. Um, yeah. and, and you don't need to tell them what you were trying to do either. Um, we already talked about the game plan. Let's just move on and tap paddles and let's have fun and, and, and figure it out that way. Um, and then if you do have chemistry, I think that just helps you a little bit when matches get tight, when, when yeah. you, when you have that chemistry, 100%. it's just, it's just, it's just what it is, but you can find a middle ground with anyone, I believe. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you hundred percent. I'll give you an example. You know, David George, who isn't like the <laughs> top, top player, like I said, but he's the number one, the number one player on our Kansas city team. One of the top players, him yes. and Saad. Yes. And I, I never get a chance to play with him because he plays in pod one and I play in pod three. But one time he asked me to roommate with him, you know, and share a, a hotel room. A queen bed? Sure. Wait, 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 wait. No, like, uh, I, don't, I didn't yeah, agree I know, to, like, uh, share well, all these things on the yeah, podcast, but, Michael. I thought I that know, was just I, between you and me. Where are those well, hands? <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Between two pillows. I haven't shared a room in a hotel room other than with my wife with a guy. And, like, I don't have any years. But, like, yeah. David asked me those puppy eyes. He, he wanted a roommate. I'm like, fine, I'll do it. And. So I got to know him, you know, by him being a roommate, like he never coached me in a game, but after no. we bonded by being roomies yes. um, over a weekend mm. on Sunday, he actually cared. He came and watched my match and gave me some <laughs> tips on how to win. And he actually helped me win. But like before that, ah, who cares about Michael Chen? But all of a sudden I'm his roomie, like Michael, do this, go soft on this guy. Well, you know, attack this guy's forehand or whatever. All of a sudden he helped me win a match just because we bonded. Never would have happened at tournament. He would blow me off like some first round guy oh. that he would have knocked off i love dan gingrich's post on your post your his mm -hmm. comment yeah freaking boom yeah All right so when someone of that stature comments on your post and agrees with you that has to give you a lot of credibility and make you feel like i think you did hit a nerve with your post i i think that he and i had already talked about things like this before because of his post and he probably gave me 
um, courage to, to, to come forward as well. I thought that maybe because of my status on MPL and people watching yeah. that, that they would um, listen maybe a little more than maybe someone, you know, Judy at, you know, the rec center is right. going to post something and no one's going to care. So, um, yeah, I've gotten thumbs up when I've gone out. I also, when I went to my men's, I, I play a, a league and it's all men. And that Monday night after I posted, I walked in and they're all like giving me these little like thumbs up. <laughs> like, And then my one friend goes, wait a second. Did I play with her Sunday? Because I want to make sure that's not <laughs> right. about me. <laughs> right. <laughs> It wasn't I, about anyone. Well, one with. of the things that you mentioned, it seems like guys would get the point, even if it's purely self-interest, just there, it's not altruistic. It's purely self-interest. You're not going to win more by being a jerk, right? You would think like even in their own self-interest, they wouldn't act like that, even if they wanted to win more. But I think some men Maybe just can't they get don't. out of their own it, way. It's, it's subtle. I mean, you know, I don't know if you know that you're being a quote unquote jerk. I think that if you're, you're trying to be helpful, this is what you see. Um, some of it I believe is when you play with someone, if you're a level better or you think you're a level better, right. um, that there is that disparity. And then you feel like helpless when you're playing with someone and you want to help them. And maybe you're trying to coach them then instead you need to just build them up and let them play the best they can be. And then you slide in and, and, and you win if they play their best and you lose if you don't figure out how to bring that out of them. Yeah. That's a good point. yeah. Do you think after your post that things have changed in open play at your clinic where people are much more conscious about how they act and what they say? Do you think you've seen a difference? I think that the women are not, instead of going off and crying after and, and standing going, oh, I can't believe that happened to me again. Um, I think that they are just standing up for it saying, hey, I want to win too. Pat paddles, let's play. Let's, you know, you. I think they're hopefully they're standing up for themselves more because we've always talked about it in my women's clinics, but yeah. no one's ever really just stepped up and said, hey, you know. Or just walked off the court. I mean, I don't want to walk off. I think I just want to sit down and go, I'm just going to sit down until you get that I'm not happy. <laughs> Let's yeah. play. And it can be a guy or a girl. I don't care who yeah. it is. That's great that you're driving change in the game of pickleball. Though. I hope so. so. We we all have to do that. So big big shout out to you, Sherry, for you know, yeah. for taking that leadership role. And you are a leader mm -hmm. in NPL. So do people I do watch so. what you do and they, they listen to what you say, just like Dane is as well. So it's great to have people like you and, and Dane in yeah. our league. Yeah. I think that a lot of comments are, you know, I'm very intense on the court and, and, and strong. So if, if I come to you and say, Hey, I feel the same way sometimes when I play in rec play or when I play, you know, or I see it, let, you know, if I can give them the strength too, let, let's just stand up and be strong and let's have fun. Everybody have fun together. Yep. No, that's all so win. Well, before we go, as you know, <laughs> we're going to be going to Houston. Mm -hmm. Your right. team's home mm -hmm. facility. Yeah. The Houston Coming up Hammers. The Houston Hammers. The Houston Hammers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. The Houston Hammers, my, the moniker of my nickname. So we have to make some predictions, right, on who we think is going to win this weekend, right? Mm -hmm. Is it going to be Houston? And you can't pick Houston. So let's say I you can't don't win pick it. Houston. You I have to pick, pick Houston. Yeah, we can't pick okay. Kansas City. You I got can't it. pick Houston. So you got to give a prediction of if it's not Houston, who do you who's think? The spoiler? It, who's the spoiler? Is it Columbus? It, and Columbus has done very well. Uh, and is it Boca? They won one weekend. They've done very well. Coachella Valley is always talented. Seattle's up there. You know, you got us, Kansas City, that's kind of like in the middle, but I think the, the power ratings were said, we should be doing better than that. So you've got a lot, and you've got other surprise teams, Indy, Princeton, you know, that are, that could surprise any team that you would say, watch out for them. Well, first of all, I, if I'm looking at my, what I look at, it's not always the best players or, um, you know, win loss stuff. I'm looking at who's got the chemistry, who's got this team really rocking it and what are their, you know, external factors. And, I mean, Princeton has a baby, the cutest baby in the world. How can we beat Princeton's <laughs> baby? Like she brings the baby. Like you can't beat yeah, that. Okay. Prince, yeah. But uh, besides that, I, yeah. they have the best flag too. Right. 
They have um, a great flag. <laughs> they do. I mean, you can't beat that. But I do feel that on that Princeton team, the women are, I mean, they're kicking butt. I feel like they're coming together as a team. And they had a couple of huge upsets. They players, did. Right? And I just, I just think they, they're, they're enjoying it. They're, re- they're really enjoying it. And I see, I see from their leadership, from their team owners um, on down. And I think, I mean, of course, Jose is my best friend. So I'm going to say like, he's playing lights out right now. No doubt. Um, yeah. But from top to bottom, I feel like that, that team just, they're just a spark on that team right now that I, I want so, that spark. I want that. So you're I picking, mean, you're picking. I'm Prince freaking, of- yeah. Oh, yeah. How about Denver? I mean, Denver's a multi. Oh, I think I everyone. Denver's great. I think Denver, Denver's I think, a tough team. I think Jen's well. team. Jen's team. I'm still waiting ah, for them to you, kick everybody's Jerry. butt. Yeah, you might be waiting a long time. I think, <laughs> but, but I'm telling you, there's a difference between having all this talent and having things on paper, and then yeah. there's like this special thing. I think. I think my. I think the Houston Hammers have it. But I. <laughs> I, I just feel like I saw it that Kansas City thing. All I right. saw this team coming together, and it was. It, it bothered yeah. me a little. I mean, All I'm right, happy so yeah. for them, but they're spoilers. I'm watching for them. Like we have to play them. So and that's no the team Denver, I'm worried about. No Denver, no Columbus. It's Princeton you're going with. I'm going Princeton. They're All spoiler. Right. Yeah, heck yeah. And I play we play them this weekend. Or we play them in Houston. So and I'm worried. Right, it's great. I All mean, right. that's one I'm taking care of myself. All I have right. to establish my fastball. Let's okay, go. so if not Houston, <laughs> we got Princeton. Let's go to Jen. Jen, who do you think? And you can't pick Austin. Who do you think will win it? If not Austin, we lost Did Jen. You, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. She's I'm back running in. all over the place. I know. Yeah. I was at work all day, yeah. so I didn't get to check injury reports last last time. Every time I pick, they make me pick again. Yeah. So don't, rude. don't 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 worry about injury reports. Let's assume everyone's playing. I really want Naples to get their first win. I don't think they're going to win the weekend. I love Bob so much. (laughs) They're the nicest. I love all those people on that team. They're awesome. I don't think they're going to win the weekend. I think they're going to get a win or two this weekend. All right. I'm rooting for them to get a win. I think Kansas City. I do think Kansas City. Well, no. What? Oh, Oh, my goodness. I'm going to go Denver. That was like a tease. I haven't gone Denver a long time. I'm going to go Denver. Okay. You can go Denver. All right. You ready, Mike? Yeah. Hammer Mike, have you told us multiple times that your nickname is? Hammer Mike, I think. Yeah. I, are you allowed to give yourself a nickname like that? I don't know if that's yeah, even absolutely, hundred percent. After a whole season of giving them a hard time, Stalker. I'm officially on the Houston bandwagon. They're clearly the best team on paper, record wise, power ranking, uh, the rating. Sorry, yeah, like I know he's important. He says it's a rating, not a ranking. Uh, they're just clearly the best team. I'm not picking against Houston ever again. Wow. wow. This wow. is like he's scared of Sherry. He's sucking up to the guest. Oh, both of those things for sure. <laughs> and more. So, <laughs> do you play? Oh, look at that. That's a gun. Sherry, do you play Kansas City this weekend? No, we've played Kansas City twice now. And you yeah, beat him, right? No, wrong. No, we lost. We and let me tell you, I, I I totally folded. Like, David George and I played in that team breaker and I was like, I should have been working at the laundromat folding like first point. Great. Next three points hit right at David. David puts it away made me eat it. So that drove me to, uh, it it sure did. And you just like, again, (laughs) gave it to me. Like I haven't been, uh, I "I hope she plays like she did in that team breaker. (laughs) Oh man. You came out on fire. (laughs) Well, well, Dave and I are kind of starting to bond together. So we picked Seattle together the last time. They didn't come in first, but they had a, uh, an injury or uh, Stefan yeah. wasn't there the first day because he was sick. So that kind of impacted it. But, you know, Houston, 14 and two. Houston at home. You know, Houston is pick just dominating. <laughs> I I was tempted to pick Boca because I think Boca is a tough team. We played Boca temp- too. We beat Boca tem- last time. I was tempted to pick Denver. You know, Danny Werfel is just a winner. He, and he brings that whole team up. I, I like that team composition. They got a lot of talented players on that team, but I can't go against Houston this weekend. They're at home. Oh, you know, you two always pick the same. I mean, the pro oh, does real. that every time. It's real. I can't wait to see you guys in Houston. You guys are awesome. Yep. You know, Sherry, I love seeing you. You're the best. Uh, I root for you other than when you play Kansas city. So, but uh, you're not playing Kansas city this weekend. So no. all the best wishes for you this weekend. Have a wonderful weekend. Uh, and we'll, it'll be exciting to see who wins. So 
Oh. Thank you again for being our guest. We'll see you Sherry. soon. You're awesome. Right. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Great job, Thanks. Sherry. I had fun. We'll see you soon. All right. Take care, right. Sherry. Thanks. Bye. You guys are just, oh my goodness. Wow. <laughs> I didn't know what to say at the end. I was like, no, oh. I, <laughs> but, I got uh, beat up this episode pretty badly. Yeah. You Sherry's did. Awesome. Wow. Sherry's awesome. 11 brother. minutes, she said, and you took two time out. So, oh man. The points were quick. Yeah, they exactly. sure were. But uh, but I, I think uh, I'm really glad we talked about this partner stuff. You know, we got to be good yeah. partners. So, yeah. And I'm focused on being the best partner I can be. And, and NPL's helped me because when you root, when you play on this team and you have to see these same people for six weekends and your teammates are looking at how you act with your partners, you know, I can't imagine doing anything other than trying to be the best partner I can be. Listen, we, I always tell our kids, like, or any, anybody in life, like, whenever possible, choose kindness. It's always yep. possible, right? Be yep. nice. Have fun. Yep. Like this is such a, you know, gift and Yep. So this, this, no, I this think one of the that. great points that she made a lot so many points, but sometimes we don't even realize what we're doing, how we're saying it, and then sometimes you see yourself on video and you're like, "Ooh, that yep. wasn't very kind or nice or I shouldn't have done that eye roll or or stuff like you that." So you I, like arch your back. You go, "Ah, oh. Like that. That's right. That's <laughs> what right. I miss. So uh, thanks well, anyway. for pointing that out. I can take or he it. Goes, he goes, let's let's try moving our feet. Let's try. But I'm like, you <laughs> are moving your feet. So you mean me. <laughs> you could just say, Jen, move your feet. <laughs> <laughs> well, with, with that, we're going to close it out. So without further ado, you know, thank you, David, the Professor George, Jen, yeah. Bone Crusher Gawas. This is Michael Hammer, Mike Chen. And a big <laughs> thank you again to Sherry, the real hammer quarter. Yes, thank you. Until next time, thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in to the official podcast of the National Pickleball League. Please stay tuned as we will be back soon with our next episode as we go inside the NPL.